Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. We have heard lot of about how strings are immutable in Java. But what do we mean by that? Because I can create a string in Java and I can assign any values to that particular string variable. So how that particular string is immutable. So let's see how that particular string is immutable and why that particular string is immutable in Java. So if we declare any of the string in Java, suppose let me just declare a string string name equals to Shabir Okay, what happens is at this particular time, there is a string pool available within the JVM itself. So in that particular string pool, it will create the object Shabir with the value Shabir and the object and the variable that we have declared name that particular variable will assign that particular object to it. Okay, so that means when I write string name equals to Shabir, that Shabir string will be taken that particular object will be created into the string pool and that particular reference to that particular object will be assigned to my variable that is name. Now what happens is when I do name equals to Daudi, I'm just changing the value here. Okay. I'm just changing the value to Daudi for this variable name. So what happens in JVM is a new object is created with the value Daudi. Okay. And the reference to that particular Daudi is been assigned to the variable name and the reference which was already there for the Shabbir that has been removed now. Okay, so what happens? A new object is created and the reference to that particular object has been assigned to my variable. So this means that Java is not updating the current reference itself. It is creating the new object and it is referring that object for my variable. Now if I just remove this and if I do just string another name equals to Shabbir what JVM will do at this particular point of time is, so the JVM will check at this time is, is there any object available with the same value that we have Shabir. So if you see in the string pool now, we have the object that has the value Shabir already available stored within our pool. So whatever the new variable that we have created, that is another name, that particular variable will directly refer to that particular object itself. It won't create the another object because the object is already created in the pool. So it will just refer to that particular object. That's it. So with this, what happens is Java is doing a lot of memory management. It's a really smart memory management that Java is doing within the string pool. So this type of behavior guarantees that how many variables that we create, we create hundreds and thousands of variable. If those variables are going to refer to the same object. So if I have two currently, if you see, I have two variables. Uh, referring to the same object. So if I have thousand variables referring to the same object, there is a guarantee that none of those particular variables is going to modify that particular object. If they are changing the value, it is always creating the new object and it is referring to that particular particular object. So a lot of memory management has been done. So you, Java doesn't have to create a lot of different objects that contains the same value. So if you want to prove that as well, like those particular variables are using the same exact object, what we can do is we can do using the equals to operator. So when we do the double equals to operator, it will return true when both of those particular variables are referring to the same object. So if I do here, s out name equals to equals to another name, you can see that both name and another name is having the value Shabir. So both these particular values are stored as a single object in our string pool and both those variables are pointing to the same object. So this should return me true. You can see that it's returning true. Now when we create the another variable that is the third name and we assign the value using the new operator. We are not using string literals. We are using the new operator at that particular time. It will create the object and it will store that particular object outside the string pool. It will store that particular value in the heap memory. So at that particular time, you can see that both the objects, though they are having the same value, but they are created using the different type. One was created using the literal and another was created using the new keyword. So whenever we are using new keyword, those particular objects are stored in the heap memory and a new object is created. So now when I compare this particular object, that is another name and the third name, those particular values will be different. So if I just say string third name equals to new string, I'm, you can see that I am using the new operator 
to create the same value that is Shabbir. Okay, and if I do compare with the third name here, I should be getting false because both the objects are not same, both the objects are different. You can see I'm getting false here. So this is what string immutability means in Java that it will always create a new object and refer that object to our variable. It is not going to modify the existing object itself. So this was just a short and quick video about to show how string immutability works in Java. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you like, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos. I will try to share such quick videos with you for Java. Until next time, happy learning.